Okay, so this video is going to be a sort of nuclear safety video, or radiation safety video more specifically. And it is to demonstrate that as much as people think lead shielding is brilliant against gamma radiation, it does have limitations. Because, sadly, you'll find a lot of misinformation online where people think if you get a single piece of gamma, um, not gamma, sorry, single piece of lead like this, um, it will completely block gamma radiation. It doesn't work like that. Um, basically, it will depend on the original energy of the gamma radiation hitting it, but the lead is going to basically halve it, depending on the thickness. Um, so the more lead you have in thickness, the more um, it's going to reduce the amount of gamma getting through. But think of it more like sound or heat insulation. It's going to lower what comes through, it's not going to completely stop it. It's not like, you know, armour where a certain thickness will completely stop a bullet. No. And I'm going to demonstrate that in this video. So over there I have my box full of radioactive items. And this is the shielding I keep around the box to, you know, minimise damage to other people, and this does work very well. The thing is, I'll demonstrate in this video, though, is that distance is actually generally better than just using lead shielding. So if you've got radioactive items, don't store them really close to where you sleep or something like that. The best thing to do would actually be store them, you know, furthest away from any living people or animals. And then, um, you know, put some shielding around it, of course. Um, now, we're not talking about alpha or beta in this video, it's going to purely be about gamma. So I'm going to measure it using the DP75 Polish Geiger counter with the probe closed, so it only reads gamma. And we're going to um, also use this little DIY Geiger counter. It won't give a display, but it will click. And the point is that I can demonstrate on this. So let's turn the box around this way to begin with. Now, another thing I've got is this normally stays in the box, um, but this is where I've got a tiny, tiny bit, you can probably see there, of radium dust in the bottom. And this is where I've had bits flaking off if the autofocus will focus, there we go. It's where the, um, you can see that's far, far less than the gram. Um, and this is where, when you sometimes get radium dials or whatever, they're flaking off. And what I've been doing is very carefully putting those into an airtight jar at the moment. So let me just demonstrate something. So if I get this, let me just put that here, see where you can see it. I'll turn on this little DIY Geiger counter, and you will see just how hot a little bit of radium dust is. So, that's already detecting a load of radiation, by the way. But Let's put this by the Geiger Muller tube. Hear that? That's literally from this little bit in there. This makes the mini monitor max out at over 2K, by the way. Uh, just this little tiny bit there. But yeah, very, very hot. Uh, so that's why radium can be very deadly if you're not sensible of it. So let's um, put that one away for the moment. So what we're going to do to set up the experiment, and it's going to be a very DIY amateur experiment, as you'd imagine from me, but you might hopefully learn something. We're going to get our box here. And before I put the lead shielding on, uh, let's just measure how much is getting through. So, in terms of clickety-click, um, what I'll do... Oh, I'm managing to knock that around everywhere. Turn this one on, again. We'll put the Geiger Muller tube facing the box. Now, there shouldn't be any beta getting out, that should just be gamma. So, as you can hear, with gamma it's actually pretty hot at the moment. But what we'll do is, as we move this backwards, you'll notice there's less and less gamma getting through. And that's just because of the distance. Um, as you can hear, next to the box, there's a lot of gamma getting out of there. Just as if you had this over here as well. I'll put this here as well. That little vial. Yeah. But as, in terms of that, that won't be beta. Now what I'll also do is get this one, put the wand over there. Um, we'll flick it on to 5 uh, millironcgen, or 0 0.5 millironcgen. And what you might see already from the dial, if I hold that up, is that on the lowest setting, it's already sitting between 2 and 3, or like 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 millironcgen. If I put that onto the 5 scale, um, oh, hang on, I need to put on the right setting first, don't I? There we go. So, yeah, if I put on 0 0.5, as you can see, it's already getting pretty high, and it's going to go off the scale. So let's go to 5, 0 it, and on the 5 scale... It will depend a bit where the wand is, of course. If it was right next to that dust, it would be at the highest possible point. But as you can see, it's already getting a reading on there. So, <clears throat> again, apologise that I sound so phlegmy and horrible at the moment, because I think I've got flu or a cold or something. So anyway, let's flick this off for a moment. Now what I'm going to do is demonstrate the test. So, let's move this back, and let's get our gamma shielding. Let's also pop this guy behind the gamma shielding. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do actually, I'll just put him inside the box where he belongs. So let's put you in there. There we go. 
and we'll seal the box up so it's nice and tight and safe. So yeah, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here with the lead shielding. So if you listen to people who don't really know what they're talking about with radiation, they will say, now you've got the lead shielding in place, absolutely no gamma can get through here. So let's, shall, we, shall we just put that to the test? Because I think you'll be a bit surprised. Oh, oh dear. It's not quite working, is it? Um, just to display it with this one, let's go down to 0 0.5 milli Rontgen. Oh, and look at that. On 0 0.5, he's already pretty much going off the scale. Actually, hang on, is he on the right setting? Let's just put it there. Um, yeah, he's pretty much going off the scale. Let's put him down to this one. Let's just do the zero button. But as you can see, you're still getting readings coming through there. So, the point is, and it'll probably be easier to demonstrate this actually with just a clicking Geiger counter, rather than the DP75, as scientific it is, it is is I'll demonstrate how it's more of a distance and everything of lead shielding. So what we'll do is let's have a listen now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the lead shielding away again. I'll tell you what, let's put the lead shielding like this. I know this isn't going to be a perfect example, but let's first lift him up to this bit where there's no lead shielding. That's the clicking. Let's put there with some lead shielding. Notice there's not much difference. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to fold the lead shielding like that. So there's a lot more lead shielding, there's also a bit of dead space in between. Now what will happen is if we put the Geiger tube there, you should notice the ticking is quite a bit lower. So let's just hold it up this way. It's still actually fairly hot to be honest, but this should be getting across my message that you can't just rely on a little tiny bit of lead like people sometimes say like, oh yeah, you just in the shit of the fan, you just put some lead on you and it would stop it. It doesn't work like that. The reason being that each layer of lead is lowering the amount of gamma getting through, but it's not an exact science. Or it might be an exact science if you knew the exact thickness of the lead and everything else. Right, let's try all that lead there, just like that. Put you there, Geiger counter. Ooh, still pretty hot. But it's not as hot, is it? That's the point. Pull you away a bit. As you can see, distance is generally your safest bet, because if we put this Geiger counter here, it's much lower now. If we move that lead out the way. Uh, but again, if I move the box, the biggest indicator really is how close it is to the box. Obviously, some areas of the box are hotter than other areas. So, what I'll do now is I'll just show you something regarding lead shielding. So, if I pull that back a bit, I'll put that right against the door there. So, um, what we'll do is put this here on one side, and we'll put the Geiger Miller tube vertically. Listen to the clicking. So what that should hopefully be showing you is, I know this is a very unscientific video, but that's sort of the point, because it might be easy for people to understand, is that lead on its own, you need a very decent thickness to actually cut down on radiation. Now if I put a lead shielding like that in front of the Geiger counter, that's actually pretty good. Um, but you'll notice again, as this gets closer, I know so there might be some gamma hitting it from another angle, so let's put him flat like that. Let's remove the gap, uh, lead. Yeah, it is going up a bit. Put the lead back down. Slightly slower tick rate. And again, if we just unfolded this, he'll be a good example. Here's a load of lead in bunched up together in this area compared to a little bit of lead there.
And again, it's quite hard to demonstrate this perfectly on a video, but the point is that the thicker your amount of lead and the distance between you and the object, the less gamma getting through. It's always time, distance, exposure kind of thing of radiation. Um, so yeah, there you go. Hopefully, uh, or shielding, time, distance, shielding. Hopefully this has demonstrated something. It's that, yes, lead is important, but I'd say the most important thing if you have radioactive samples in your house is actually to store them where they're not going to harm anyone. So, there we go. Let's put him back across, because obviously that's what I'm going to do. And I've actually got a load more lead on order just to make this more and more safe. And of course, the point is I don't store this near anybody as well. But, yeah. Nope, he's fallen off. But yeah, the point is that, yeah, you do need to be careful when it comes to gamma radiation. There we go. 